This tutorial is going to deal with setting up a musical score in such a fashion that it will make your life a lot easier when you sit down to start designing drill for your marching band. Some drill writers prefer to use production sheets. These are sort of like a spreadsheet in which you put some of the information about the transitions and what section is supposed to be doing what at any given moment, and those can work great. I have used them in the past. I feel like using a score works better for me now simply because I can see what is happening in the music at any given moment, and I can write all sorts of notes about what I may want to do drill-wise right into the score itself. So keep in mind that while the, the spreadsheet distills the information as much as possible, working from a score for musicians should be the optimal choice um, because it allows you to see everything happening musically at the same time as you're thinking about what's going to happen visually. And also, while most drill designers can read music, not all of them can. So I can understand why a production sheet is important in some cases. A production sheet might also come in handy if you're writing drill without music, without a score. Uh, for example, if you're writing drill to a recording. Uh, so ultimately, whatever method works best, that's what you should use. If you are a diehard production sheet person, then this tutorial is not for you. So first things first, you're going to want to number all of your measures from beginning to end, through repeats, through endings, through codas, all of that. So as you can see, here is a clean score. And down here at the bottom, all of my measures are numbered. Some publishers and some arrangers do this for you already, and some don't. So if your score is not numbered or if the numbers are really, really tiny, then just go through and number all of the measures. When you get to repeats, you just keep going. You obviously do not repeat. So that would be measure 27 after the jump, after the repeat. You go through endings and you go all the way to the final measure. That is measure 35. Next thing is going to be figuring out how many total counts there are in your music. And I'm going to go ahead and switch over to a score that is already converted to work uh, with counts. I want you to ignore all of the other notes here for right now and just look down here at these red numbers. So at the end of the first measure, we've gone through four counts. That makes sense because we're in four, four. So one, two, three, four, four counts there. Eight counts here, 12, 16. And we're lucky because this score is in four, four all the way through. So it lays out in multiples of four all the way through. Here we are at bar 10. So of course that would be count 40. Here we are at bar 16. So of course that would be count 64. And this continues until we get here. Notice there are no more red numbers. Why is that? Well, there's an end, uh, there's a repeat right here. So at the end of this measure, 20, uh, at 101, 102, 103, 104, we have the repeat, we would go back to the top. And so when we go back to the top, now we're starting to use secondary count numbers. And there are different colors just so that you're able to see them a little bit more clearly. I don't use different colors when I'm actually penciling these into my score. I'll just pencil the counts underneath the, the primary counts. So we do the same thing, 108, 112, 116, going on and on in multiples of four until we get here. Notice that there are no orange numbers. Why is that? Well, this is the first ending. So on the second time through, we would not be playing through here. So there's no need for counts. We need to go to the second ending, which is right there. And now we continue our count sequence, 184, 188, 192, all the way here to the end, our final counts, 212. Actually, uh, I know it is the final count because it's a whole note right there. So that's our final count, 212 counts in the entire arrangement. After writing in all the counts, now we need to start thinking about the transitions or the drill moves. And that comes about from listening to the music over and over again and sort of getting a feel for where things might shift, where pictures might change, where people might move. Sometimes it happens really easily in the phrases of the music itself, and sometimes you're going to want to move around mid-phrase. This is also where you're going to start making notes to yourself about what's happening in the music specifically so that you can maybe make it happen on the field visually. <clears throat> Let's go back to the top. And I use, I do actually use colored markers for this when I'm writing drill. I'll use green for go and red for stop. And I'll make notes to myself like you see right here. So this is a 2T opening. 
everyone is playing. Most people are playing forte. It's a big sound. So I think I need the full ensemble moving and a big picture of some sort. I'll just make a little note to myself. The green means here's where we start movement and we'll end the movement right there. So that's a 16 count move. That's your first page. Actually, this is page one over here because page one would be your, be your opening set. And this is page two over here. And then kind of the same music here. So I wrote the same stuff. It's not gonna be the exact same drill picture. I'm not gonna do the same movement two times in a row, obviously, but similar, a big picture, big form. And that will go for another 16 counts to count 32. The music changes slightly here. We have this downward ostinato pattern and we have an upwardly rising melody. So I thought to myself, maybe a little bit of contrary motion here or even a follow the leader might be quite good. So that goes on for 16 counts. And then note, I wrote this in a red marker. That's because at the end of this move, I'm gonna have the band do a hold. So at the end of count 48, they've just done this move right here uh, in these four measures. And at the end of count 48, they're gonna hold for four counts. So from 48 to 52, I'm just write in hold. Then we have a five bar melody or a five bar phrase. And again, it's a big picture move. So I will write a big form. I also need the mellophones to be near the front because they've, they're carrying some of the mel they're carrying the melody here and they're probably gonna have trouble being heard or maybe we don't have enough of them. So that's the note I've made to myself, like mellows near the front. At the end of this move, it'll be a 20 count move. It's count 72. Now we have our first ending and I've decided I need the trumpets near the front stage. I could probably also add the alto saxophones and mellows so tr trumpets and alto voices near the front stage. And obviously if you're writing this in pencil or pen directly into the score, it's a lot easier for you to deal with. But I'm telling myself that this 16 count move here is going to feature the trumpets or the alto voices near the front of the stage or at the very least not buried in the back so that they're having trouble being heard then we have our next drill move which i haven't written anything about because it's kind of similar to the last one that's our 16 count move and here we have a repeat we already know what's going to happen we jump back to the beginning now, when we jump back to the beginning, I don't necessarily have to use the same number of counts for my transitions. For example, this transition here, when I come back the second time through, I could make it two eight count moves. So that would be a, a page tab at 112 and a page tab at 120. Uh, I, I could make it one four count move and a 12 count move. That probably wouldn't make a lot of musical sense, but I can do whatever I want. Actually, I can do whatever I want the first time too. I'm just letting you know that you don't have to do the exact same things when you go through a repeated section. So we'll go through this repeated section and go to the second ending. And here in the second ending, I've written to myself, there's less motion, maybe use halftime steps. That's because the music kind of has this halftime feel to it. So as long as the music has a halftime feel to it, then maybe some of my players can be marching in halftime while some are marching in regular time. So I've made a little note to myself and maybe use a little less motion in general. As you can see, there are four measures. So that will again be a 16 count move. And then we're getting close to the end of the tune. So I wanna start bringing the groups together for a large ending form. And in my particular case, I'm using it as a 16 count move. This, this is written mostly with college bands in mind, not with a drum corps or a competitive high school marching band. If it were, then there probably would be a lot more eight count moves and maybe no 16 count moves because that seems to be the trends, well, especially in drum corps, there'd probably be a lot of four count moves there as well. That just means more motion. But for a show band or an average high school marching band or for a college band, these longer forms, longer developing transitions are kind of what, uh, what is our bread and butter. So here we have a four count move to count 208, and then we have a halt to end the show. And that's pretty much how you set up a musical score so that when you go down to your drill program and start entering the page tabs and the counts and the instructions for the transitions, you're already ahead of the game and you don't have to sit there trying to be creative at the same time as you're figuring out the nitty gritty. So this will help you immeasurably when it comes to setting up your drill. 
in a future video, I will discuss how to set up page tabs and how to set up the music, to uh, the audio to sync your drill production to. But this at least gets you started with how to set up a score so that you're able to use it in your drill writing pursuits.